In this chapter, we've been discussing how we can use eigen functions of differential operators to solve differential equations. And in the last video, we determined the necessary form that a differential operator has to take in order for its eigen functions to be mutually orthogonal. And we showed that it had to be in the form of a sturm louville operator. So what we want to do here is to consider the eigen problem, the differential eigen problem for the sturm louville operator. So we have L operating on U is equal to minus lambda times u. That's the normal differential eigen problem. Here you'll notice we're going to include the w, the weight function, on both sides just so it cancels that out. And then the L here is our sturm louville form that we had in the previous video. So that looks like this. We have ddx of p times du dx plus q times u. That is the sturm louville differential operator operating on u. And then from the eigen problem we also have the lambda times w times u term as well. This now is a differential equation. We'll call that the sturm louville differential equation. So the sturm louville differential equation is a differential equation that has the sturm louville operator as its differential operator. And what we're going to consider is for different p's, q's, and w's, some special functions and some helpful eigenfunctions that are commonly encountered in various contexts. Now remember the integration by parts that's inherent in getting the adjoint of a differential operator requires that the boundary conditions be homogeneous so that those terms that are introduced in the integration by parts at the endpoints vanish. And so we have to have homogeneous boundary conditions. Now there's two main results. The first one we did not prove and that is that the eigenvalues of the sturm louville operator are both distinct and non-negative. The second one which we did prove is that for distinct eigenvalues the corresponding eigenfunctions are indeed mutually orthogonal. And we've been taking advantage of this property throughout our solutions of these differential equations. So remember orthogonality means that the inner product of two functions, in this case two of the eigenfunctions u sub n and u sub m, is equal to zero. And for the case of functions the inner product corresponds to the integral of u times m times w. So it's the inner product with respect to the weight functions. So again, what we're going to do is look at some different p's, q's, and w combinations to see what types of eigenfunctions we get and the corresponding sturm louville differential equations. And you'll see some familiar names along the way. So the first one we've already seen, and that's Fourier series. We did this early on in uh, this chapter. So the differential operator is d squared dx squared, so that's our script L. It's operating on u, and then the corresponding differential eigenproblem includes the lambda times u term. So this is our sturm louville equation. That, that's our differential eigenproblem. For boundary conditions where u is specified at 0 and u is specified at 1, both of which are 0 to be homogeneous, we get that the corresponding eigenfunctions are a constant times sine of n pi x. So we call this the Fourier sine series, and we saw that in several examples earlier in the chapter. If we make one simple change, so the same equation, same differential eigenproblem, but simply change the boundary conditions, so rather than u at 0 being 0, u at 1 being 0, it's going to be u prime at 0 and u prime at 1, both being 0. So that simple change requires you to go back reevaluate the eigenfunctions, and instead of getting a Fourier sine series, you'll get a Fourier cosine series. So it'll be a constant times cosine of n pi x in that case. Bessel functions, so here is the differential eigenproblem that produces Bessel functions. This is of the sturm louville form. It's ddx of x times du dx plus the quantity minus nu squared over x plus mu squared times x all times u is equal to zero. That's obviously a differential equation. It's a sturm louville equation with p being x, q being minus nu squared over x, w being x, and lambda being the mu squared. That's all actually here on the next slide. So the corresponding eigenfunctions are Bessel functions. There's Bessel functions of various kinds. There's Bessel functions of the first kind, Bessel functions of the second kind. They go by j's and y's. And, and here's an example of how four of them look. There's an infinity of these. And this is how four of them look. So here's j0, j1, y0, 
and Y1. So you can see they have this oscillatory behavior. And the key then is that these Bessel functions are orthogonal over this interval from zero to one with respect to the weight function, which is X, as you see here. Now this Bessel equation arises oftentimes when you're solving PDEs where you have a Laplacian, which is a del squared U, in cylindrical coordinates. It's often the case that you end up with a Bessel type equation. Legendre polynomials. So here again is the differential eigenproblem that produces the Legendre polynomials as the eigenfunctions, the ddx of the quantity one minus x squared times du dx plus nu times nu plus one times u is equal to zero. Now the interval is minus one to one. So you can see that p is the one minus x squared. q, there is no q term. w is one. And then lambda is nu times nu plus one. When you get the eigenfunctions for this differential eigenproblem, you'll end up with capital P zero is equal to one, P one is equal to X, P two is a half times three X squared minus one and so forth. There's an infinity of these increasing orders. So this is X to the zero, X to the one, and X squared order polynomials. And the way these are often expressed is through a recursion relation that relates three successive Legendre polynomials. So in other words, if you know what P0 is and P1, then you can get P2. If you know P1 and P2, you can get P3 and so forth. So you can encapsulate all of them simply through this recursion relation and knowing two of the corresponding eigenfunctions. Now we've actually already shown that Legendre polynomials are orthogonal over this interval from minus one to one. This was done early on. You maybe remember we used Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization to orthonormalize a set of polynomials, and we end up getting these Legendre polynomials. The Legendre equation often arises when you're solving Laplace's equation, so del squared u is equal to zero in spherical coordinates. You think, why do we need more than one type of polynomial? Well, another type of polynomial known as Chebyshev polynomials arise from this differential eigenproblem. So the square root of one minus x squared, that's p of x, q of x again is zero, and w here is then one over the square root of one minus x squared, and then the lambda, well that's nu squared. So over the interval from minus one to one, we now get a different set of polynomials. It's still order zero, order one, second order, third order, so forth, but it's a different set. They are mutually orthogonal, just as the case with Legendre polynomials, and we also have a recursion relation that relates three successive Chebyshev polynomials. So given T0 and T1, we can get T2. And again, they are mutually orthogonal over this interval from minus one to one.